Icon releases their token distribution platform. MasterCard publishes a patent to speed up blockchain node activation. Japan is pressuring exchanges to delist privacy coins such as Monero. Binance partners with Quantstamp to announce that all ERC20 tokens listed on the exchange are free from the batch overflow bug. And is that a Bitcoin we see on the Swiss National Bank? A critical bug has been found in EOS smart contracts. But how does this compare to the ERC-20 batch overflow bug? And the boys of Silicon Valley are set to do an ICO in the next episode, bringing even more awareness to the cryptocurrency space. And are you feeling the heat of the phoenix? We try to break down the newest Coca-Cola kid tweet. And the markets retrace ever so slightly after an extremely bullish weekend. We've got all your headlines mixed with some daily market analysis. I'm Elio Trades, and your FUD TV daily update starts now. So as we're diving in here, we can see that EOS has, of course, recorded a big loss here with a 10% drop. That's not a big deal, of course, considering that EOS was literally $10 a week ago or a few days ago, and it pumped all the way up to 22. I can see EOS continuing to pump. They have a lot of news coming up. EOS project is just getting rolled out, so this is exciting times for EOS. We covered them in our top five coins of the month, and we just want to say to everyone, it wasn't the most extravagant, crazy list of coins that we picked this month, but that's because this month is a pivotal month for some of the big coins. This is a great month for crypto. It doesn't mean that you need to be knowing about a bunch of cryptocurrencies that nobody's ever heard of to get rich this month, or to do well this month, rather. We don't like to talk about getting rich. We promise we're not going to talk about getting rich. No Lambo talk. No Lambo talk. The point is, this is an exciting month for the top 10 crypto. We have Tron with big news. How many people have been excited for Tron over the last few months? We have EOS with huge news. We have Stellar with huge news. When you have the biggest projects in this space delivering on their very, very lofty promises, of course, the biggest projects often have the loftiest promises, and you're seeing those promises being fulfilled. This is huge news for the industry. So when you're looking at the top 10 coins and things are going well for the top 10 coins and they're delivering on their technology promises, what that means is that the whole cryptocurrency industry starts to look very fundamentally healthy. Obviously, looking at the biggest losers, we have two of the coins that we picked in our list this morning, Ontology and EOS. And if you're looking to take out positions in these coins, that's not a bad thing, as we don't think that this pullback is any indication of their strength as projects, but rather just an overextension very temporarily on their bull run. I think Ontology has shown that it goes up, it retracts by a small percentage, consolidates to the right, flags, and then goes up again. And we've seen that happen at the $1.50 mark, at the $2.50 mark, the $3.50 mark, the $4.50 mark, the $5.50 mark, and now it's looking like it went up to nine, back down to almost eight. It's looking like it's playing around with that before it makes a move over 10. I wouldn't be surprised to see Ontology just keep making these moves just because of what we know about the fundamentals behind the project. Anyway, all in all, we've consolidated a bit. We're, we're trying to build steam and get ready for this next push. <laughs> In our lead coin news out of the day, we have word that Icon is now debuting their ICO token distribution platform, ICO Nest. Of course, this ICO Nest project allows for anyone to create and distribute a token that's based on the Icon network. Blue Whale, which is one of the first ICOs to come out on Icon, is of course utilizing this ICO Nest software to do their token distribution as we speak. Here's a little peek at the UI. You can see it's very simple. You have your token exchange rate from Icon, your cap, you have your uh, duration, you can set a bunch of different settings, your, your bonuses, pre-sales, different rounds. Obviously, if you've been following the Icon project, this is one of the most exciting projects in the space. And just because it didn't end up on our May list doesn't mean that it isn't on our list. We are very big bullish supporters of Icon. We've been accumulating positions in Icon for some time. And whenever there are good prices on Icon, like I'm not sure if I would qualify right now being an amazing price on Icon, but it's not a bad price on Icon given that we do see this project starting to truly explode as it starts to bring products to market like we're seeing. And in totally not surprising, not shocking news at all, MasterCard pursues even more blockchain patents, this time seeking to speed up blockchain node activation. Essentially, the point of their technology is to allow for nodes to verify much faster. Right now, in order for any node to verify itself, it must verify the entire blockchain of information. It takes a very long time and it's very cumbersome. So this is essentially a way that nodes could get around that by going through a different process that's much more expedited. It's definitely not surprising as many payments processors and banking solutions, or banks rather, have really entered into the blockchain space and specifically tried to pursue patents. Anyway, I find it very interesting to see payments processors, the biggest in the world, obviously pursuing blockchain as the future. The writing is on the wall, people. The writing is on the wall. And again, we must commend our guy, Chang Peng Zhao, CZ, the spiritual leader of Binance. CZ verified that all ERC-20s listed on the Binance exchange are indeed 
bug-free. They are not affected by the batch overflow bug that was allowing for users to create ad nauseum or without limit new tokens and sort of deposit or trade them like regular tokens. And of course, this was working in collaboration with Quantstamp, which is supposedly bringing exactly this type of security verification to the blockchain. So this is really killing two birds with one stone, proving out the value of both platforms to consumers. We love it. And it seems like the debate over privacy coins is going to continue as Japan starts to turn its focus to these types of digital currencies, trying to put pressure on exchanges to delist them. Essentially, Japan's just saying that these cryptocurrencies have become far too closely interlinked with the underworld, the crime world. This is the complaint we hear levied against the Bitcoin community. Of course, this is due to its roots in the Silk Road community. And to be fair, there was a lot of illicit activity going on. However, Bitcoin has become extremely traceable and everybody knows that the FBI and everyone else is tracing these Bitcoin addresses. And if anything, Bitcoin's probably more traceable than cash. And yeah, I wouldn't see it as crazy that governments would really start to crack down on this as this is precisely the type of behavior that they don't like. This is exactly the part of crypto that they don't like. Does this mean that they can actually enforce a ban on privacy coins? I know that they can't. And the reason is because of decentralized exchanges. Decentralized exchanges that work wallet to wallet will allow for anyone to trade privacy coins wallet to wallet without ever going through a centralized exchange. What I mean to say is there's not going to be a way to enforce this. So it's pretty interesting to see privacy coins coming into the focus. And I do believe that this is going to be a battleground ongoing as governments don't want privacy coins, yet there's not really a way technologically, given what's evolving right now, for them to be stopped. I believe this is going to be a hot button discussion over the next few years in crypto. If you haven't been paying attention, HBO's Silicon Valley has definitely been digging into blockchain. The main storyline of the show now is that they're building a decentralized internet. This is obviously a blockchain based project that they're creating. They just haven't called it that throughout the entire season, even though they're making tons of references to Bitcoin cryptocurrency. And now we hear, now we hear that they're gearing up to get frustrated with their investors and turn to an ICO. So now we're going to shine a light on ICO as a funding mechanism for new technology. And we're doing it on HBO through one of the most popular comedies on the air. This is amazing. And one of the dominoes that's obviously going to fall as people become more aware, more connected, more understanding of the ICO space, the cryptocurrency space, much like happened with the internet. It turns out that during a security check, the EOS smart contract code actually was found to have some vulnerabilities. That's right, there was a similar bug to the batch overflow or proxy overflow smart contract bug that was found in some ERC-20 contracts last week. And this was found in combination with Cybex, which is EOS's security audit firm. Regardless, the issue is being addressed right now, but it just shows you that the biggest, most established projects in this space are still having trouble and that there are still security vulnerabilities from time to time. This is code and no code is perfect. But what we are seeing here between Quantstamp and of course Cybex is the ability to have checks and balances here and have organizations that create security and create reliability, create trust. This is what blockchain needs is the trust in the technology. So as long as we have ways or a means by which to create more security or to audit that security, I think we're on the right track. Obviously, security breaches will happen. They happen in the fiat world. They happen in the centralized world and they will happen in the decentralized world. We just have to have a mechanism by which to deal with them. And the Waves platform, which is another multi-signature wallet with a decentralized exchange, which makes it easy for people to create and distribute tokens, has launched smart contracts on their testnet. We don't want to go too deep into this. We just wanted to let you know if you're a part of the Waves fam or invested in Waves that they just launched their smart contracts on their testnet. So more progress from Waves. And know your eyes don't deceive you. That is a Bitcoin B being projected onto the side of the Swiss National Bank. This is just more activism, more artwork, more excitement from the culture, the community that is cryptocurrency. That's one of the things that really brought me into this community, that really brought me into crypto, was the strength of community, the strength of culture, the memes. Ooh. The easily relatable experiences that connect all people in crypto, the FOMO, the FUD, all of the things that really bring us together. And I think art pieces like this are just expressions of our communal excitement, our communal pride in what we're participating in and what it means for the future. Go shine more Bitcoins on more things, people. And last but not least, hey, listen, my crispy, sweet spiced egg rolls. I'm all out of gum, but praise the light. That's right, the Coca-Cola Kid strikes again with another tweet. If you don't know who the Coca-Cola Kid is, it's half man, half being, half ethereal mist. This person, or shall we say, timeless extraterrestrial being, seems to have some real insider's view of what's happening over at VeChain. 
Regardless, this person, the Coca-Cola kid, is known for tweeting tons of cryptic stuff that very quickly turns out to be true predictions or not really predictions, but insider knowledge that's being dropped in this sort of secretive, sort of viral, cryptic way onto Twitter, and it always turns out to be true. In response to a box mining tweet, they posted about a cigarette the day before the partnership with the National Tobacco Monopoly in China was announced. And now they seem to be hinting at a few different things here in this, and we've actually broken down this tweet uh, we've gone through all the different iterations and theories. Here's what's going on here. I'm not going to read this whole thing. There's a lot because there's a bunch of different sections. But the one section we know for sure here is, is the middle paragraph, the, the third to the bottom paragraph. Substances we use for nourishment are created by those in ushered fields, the greatest lands of vast green with no shelter. Enormous amounts created for the greatest natural flow with no color as both liquid and non-liquid. This portion seems pretty clearly about dairy. And if you take the letters out, substances, it's N. I, U, N, A, I, if you take the each letter that's highlighted in that third paragraph there, and that spells the Chinese word for milk. VeChain might be partnering with a huge dairy producer or dairy importer, which apparently is run surprisingly like a monopoly in China. This could be an extremely enormous partnership. And of course, fake milk and fake dairy supplements has been a huge problem sweeping throughout China. It's what Wabi sort of sold themselves on. But now seeing VeChain come and sort of step into this arena is not going to be surprising as they really do seem to be the leading RFID and sort of IoT solution right now in blockchain, followed shortly by Walton, who seemed to have a lot of the same connections. So this is an interesting tweet. We're not going to go too much deeper into it because we don't know what's inside this guy's head. But it seems like the, one of the paragraphs here is about the gold markets. One of the paragraphs here is about dairy. And one paragraph down here, people seem to think that it's about AI or smart media. At any rate, there is a lot that could be in this tweet. And we just thought because it's fun, this is the culture, this is the conspiracy theory part of things, that we just thought we'd float this out there. And you guys can see in the next few days, if VeChain announces a partnership with a big dairy producer, or VeChain announces a partnership with a dynamic content or AI producer, or a sort of golds market, more traditional security commodities markets, that's where I could see this tweet being stamped as, hey, this has been a prediction, and now we need to start really paying attention whenever the Coca-Cola kid puts stuff out. Well, that's it for today's news. We hope you enjoyed it, and of course, it's not over between us. Let's keep this conversation going down in the comments. The comments have become my favorite part of my life these days. I love hearing what you guys have to say. I love discussing about cryptocurrency with you guys, and I want this to be the central hub. I want this to be the place where people come to find answers, to really discuss deep knowledge on crypto. So let's do it. Let's prove that we're the smartest cryptocurrency channel community on the entire internet. Let's do it right now. FUD Nation, I believe in you guys. We're elevating the discourse each and every day on this channel. If you guys are new to FUD TV, I highly suggest that you subscribe as we do crypto vids each and every day on this channel. And we work hard to bring you the best information that we possibly can. I'm Elio Trades. It's been an absolute pleasure having you with me today on FUD TV. And I'll catch you very soon on the next episode.